Hey everybody, welcome. My name is Lauren. I'm a homeschooling mom of three girls and today I'm going to share my fourth grade review. I feel like I just shared what my fourth grader was going to be using for this school year and I can't believe the school year's already done. She's almost finished with these books. Some of them she has finished and it's just gone by so, so fast. Um, I actually, I really enjoy these type of videos, even though the what we're gonna be using for next year curriculum videos are really fun too and they're exciting. Um, I like the review videos because it shows, like you, you use the curriculum all throughout the year and so you can really see the ins, the outs, the goods, the bads, what worked, what didn't, what you could change. And you have a really, really obviously good understanding of how the curriculum is. So I obviously have a much better picture of uh, everything than when I shared what we were going to be using. So I'm going to just get started right into the video. This is not going to be really in any particular order. I'm just going to kind of grab what I have first and, uh, and we'll go from there. So first I have reading comprehension for this is from a Becca. These, um, are really, I really liked these skill sheets. These are really great because you read a story. They're meant to be independent. There is, I believe, a teacher guide to go with it. I didn't get that. Um, but they're meant to be independent. The child reads a passage, for example, um, on one page. And then on the next page, on the back, answer some questions, some comprehension questions. And there's all different type of passages. So there's fiction, there's nonfiction, there is, um, I think, compare and contrast, there is descriptive, there is sequential. And they're not only having to read this and answer questions, but they're also having them figure out what type of, of passage it is. So just like I was saying, it's sequential, et cetera, et cetera. It also has them thinking about like the theme of the passage and it gives them a few options for what the theme could be. And it gets them thinking beyond just this happened and then this happened. It's asking them a little bit more um, critical thinking questions that they really have to kind of think about what type of, of work they have just read. She was doing these once a week and I believe there's more than, there's uh, 43. So obviously that wasn't quite enough. So she's kind of playing catch up right now because she's determined to finish before the end of the year, even though I told her it's okay if you don't, she wants to. So she's doing a few of these a day to kind of make sure she finishes by the end of the year. But overall, these are good. She doesn't complain. I think she enjoys it. And I think it's really good for that again, critical thinking type, making sure they are really concentrating on what they've been reading. Next, I have uh, the good and the beautiful math level four. She is just about to finish these. She's got maybe one or two lessons left. I'm not really going to go into this because they don't even sell uh, this version before. There's a, a new updated version that she didn't want to do this year. It worked well. It's, I love the good and the beautiful math. So, um, it worked really, really well for us. She, she enjoys it. I wasn't going to go in any particular order, but because I mentioned math now, I feel like I need to share some of our other math things. So she started these last year in third grade when she was doing multiplication. And I've shared these before actually. Um, and there is, it's a hundred days obviously, and there are 60 questions. So she would have to go through timed. It really, really explains itself. It's pretty, yes. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and so she did those, but she was getting a little bit of a little bit burned out. So we put this on the shelf for a little bit and we did, um, these shaping math course books. These are from Singapore, uh, but it's not the main, their main like popular ones, like dimensions or whatever the other Singapore ones are. These are just, I think, random uh, workbooks. These would go in a mastery approach. So one chapter would be on area and perimeter. One chapter would be on place value. One chapter would be on time, money, etc. And so the thing about this is that if she got to a chapter that she hadn't necessarily learned about in The Good and the Beautiful, she was kind of stumped. She would try to teach it to herself and figure it out and I would kind of go along, but I just didn't want that overlap of like her, you know, trying to figure it out. I want our core math to be what is teaching her the topics and then our supplemental math to be just kind of reinforcing that, not teaching her brand new 
things because I don't want her to be frustrated. This is just independent work. So this worked okay for us. There was nothing wrong with it. I probably should have done maybe level three and that way it would have been a little bit easier and she could have done, had more confidence in it. Uh, she never really got frustrated. She, you know, kind of plowed through and she, uh, she did well. It's just, it didn't really work well with the math we were doing. Um, so there's nothing wrong with it. It just was not the greatest for us, not the greatest fit for us. I kind of shelved that. I let her pick and choose the chapters because again, they didn't go at all in order of like what she knew. Uh, this, this, the scope and sequence was a little bit different, but what I did do and what she did, and we really liked these was, was these math tests from Scholastic. She would do one a day and there was only like five or six questions and she would do, um, she would do those. She knew almost all of this, but maybe one or two things she hadn't learned. So it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, and then there's the answer key in the back here. So I really like that. It made it easier for me. Um, and so this was good. So we're actually doing this for next year as well. Then we have handwriting. <laughs> I just got the PDF because I had already bought all my stuff from the good and the beautiful. This is from the good and the beautiful and last year. And I didn't want to just buy this random thing. So I said, let me do the PDF. I never ever bound it. And so, and sometimes I like forgot to print it out. And so <laughs> that was my, my mistake. And so anyway, she, um, she's not quite finished with this. There's only a hundred pages and she's not quite finished, but she'll work on, on it throughout, um, throughout the summer. And that's fine. It's just one page a day. She did say she wanted to finish it so that she could get her certificate because she's very like, it has to be done by the end of the year, but I'm like, it's okay. It's all right. If it's not, it's okay. And, um, so we'll see how it goes if she finishes it. But anyway, level five is, um, is cursive. It's like, I want to say 80 or 90% cursive. There is a little bit of, of, um, of manuscript in there, but it's not super overwhelming. This is probably like the most that they would do or a poem. So it's not like they're doing paragraph after paragraph. Um, it's really good digestible chunks for them to, uh, like this would be a little passage that they do. So they do do scripture. If you're a secular homeschooler, um, not interested in the scripture, you could probably skip those pages, but there is, it is interwoven, you know, like God is our creator, that type of thing. Um, but they also do just, you know, my future is bright. I can stand, you know, I stand for what is right. So it is like moral things as well that they are copying. And I really like that because there's something about, I think there's something to be said about copying like positive moral phrases and writing that down. I think it just helps stick in the brain a little bit more than if they just read it or recited it. They're getting that extra little, little step in there that helps it sink in. We're going to do Wordly Wise. She has finished with this. This was her bookmark. And so this was, this was good. <laughs> she liked it. She wants to do the, you know, the next level. This was level four. She wanted to do level five. She really enjoyed it. I, it's very popular and it's a very solid, solid course. Don't get me wrong. It is. Um, and I shared this before. There's something I can't quite put my finger on that. I personally, like if I was a student, I wouldn't really enjoy doing this, but you know what? She likes it. It's not something that I have to teach her. It's not like I'm sitting there doing this, you know, if it was math or language arts or something like that, it might be a bit little different story, but it's independent. I just grade it, go over it with her. Um, and so if she likes it, then we'll keep doing it. So, but what this does, if you're looking for, so it not only does um, vocabulary words, but it, it does incorporate reading comprehension uh, on the last lesson or on the, it's like the last exercise of each lesson. So for every lesson, there's 20 lessons in here. Each lesson has that reading comprehension. So yes, it was a little bit redundant to do both of these. However, this one, this reading comprehension is a little bit different. It's set up in uh, questions and they have to answer incomplete sentences. So it doesn't ask about the structure or the style or comparing or contrasting necessarily. It's literally just asking about the story and what happened in the story. So it is a little bit different, but again, it is that same, same principle of the reading comprehension. So wordly wise, overall, she liked it. I think it's fine. If she didn't want to do it again, I would say that's fine. 
I, I wouldn't like push for her, but I think it really is a solid, solid course. Don't get me wrong. I think it's really well for teaching, does a really good job of teaching vocabulary and using different exercises to reinforce um, the different words. Next we have, um, she just printed these out. It's really cute. She from typing.com is where she does typing. She wanted to do that. And I was like, okay, I'm not really like, I'm not paying for this. This is free. So she does it free and it's fine. Like it's typing. I don't need frills and anything fancy or fluff. I'm going to just cover our last name, but she just printed this out. So she finished the, um, the beginner one a little while ago, and now she's on the intermediate one. She went from six words per minute to 11 words per minute. And so, um, I feel like it's fine. It does the job. It's, it's independent. Uh, it's one less thing for you have to worry about mom or for you to worry about mom. Um, so if you're interested in typing, I recommend typing.com. Lastly, we have language arts and we did the good and the beautiful language arts. She, uh, had done a Becca in the past and I showed her both options between a Becca's fourth grade and the good and the beautiful fourth grade. And so she chose this one and we both have really enjoyed it. This is like 98% independent, but, um, obviously I look over her work and, and grade everything. And if she has questions, so this has really been a really, really good, um, it's good because it's independent. It gives her a little bit of confidence and she has done really, really well. So how it's set up is there is a small parent teacher section and it's usually either they're reciting a poem to you or reading a passage to you. And so like today this would be, she would just read this poem to me or they're doing what's called challenging sentence climbs and they have those, they have to read maybe like 10 or so sentences that have more difficult words that are not on fourth grade level. And so once they master those, they're able to like color in a little bird from a different country and read about the bird and it's fun. She really likes doing that as well. And so that is pretty much it. The rest is independent. So this was pretty, I don't know. It's kind of a game changer for us that it was independent. They cover a little bit of each. So it's not like 20 diagramming. It's maybe four diagramming. She has to edit. This would be a lesson. Parallel structure in a series so that you can see that. I don't know how well you can see this. A sentence needs three things. So you can see it's just a little bit of multiple activities that they're doing and it just they all build it's not spire it's not mastery it's spiral so they're doing this they're reviewing lots of different you know parts of speech and commas in a series and all of that um a little bit each day there's a readers that go along with so they are able to read stories and then answer some a few maybe like two reading comprehensions about comprehension questions about it. They may have to write a sentence, but it's very, very basic. And then they say read for 20 minutes. Ah, good books from the good and the beautiful list. I don't read them for, or she doesn't read them from that. I don't require that. She reads kind of, you know, books that she's interested in. And so that would be that. Uh, they also do a lesson on uh, geography. They incorporate geography in there as well. If you're interested, I have done a whole I showed how we do a lesson. So if you wanna know more about this, uh, I will leave, leave that video down below so that you can see how she um, she does a lesson and how this is laid out and everything. And I'm also actually gonna be filming like a day in the life of a fourth grader. And so I'll, I'll kind of include all of these so that you can see how, how it works in action. And then next we have this spelling and writing workshop. This goes along with the good and the beautiful. Uh, the cool thing about this is, is that this is separate, separate. So if you don't want to do their spelling and their writing, you just want to do their grammar, you could just buy this grammar book and you wouldn't have to do this writing and spelling. So how this works is that there is different uh, spelling workshop and then a writing workshop. Each day there's a grammar lesson. And then at the end of the grammar lesson, you would flip into this book and do the writing one. So it's, you know, whether it's a creative writing assignment or you would do the spelling workshop. They're not doing spelling every day. They're not doing writing every day. They're alternating between the two. The spelling in here works a little bit different than any spelling I've seen before. It's not traditional spelling where you have a list you do the list and do the exercises for one week and then Fridays you have a test their theory behind how they have their spelling is that um, if children just do you know 15 spelling words for a week that it doesn't really stick and so what they have them do is work on smaller groups smaller amount of words but for more than a week and that way it it's actually several weeks it lasts throughout the whole unit and there's seven units 
per in the entire uh, language arts, the grammar section. And so each spelling section segment would last for an entire unit. So it's there, instead of having one week of spelling words, they would have maybe three weeks or so of the same spelling words to really make sure it's really sticking. Now, as far as the writing, how the writing goes. Um, so she, Larissa, my fourth grader, is about to finish. She's on like the last three or four lessons. And to my recollection, the best of my um, ability to recall, she's only written one paper. A lot of it was uh, rewriting paragraphs, putting paragraphs into your own word, you know, like avoiding plagiarism and things like that, Mating, making um, creative sentences, so sentences that had that had like interesting word wording to it. So that type of thing. But there was not a lot of writing in this. So this is, she wrote a paper on macaws. I think it's maybe six or so, four, four, five, six paragraphs. And that is about all the writing she has done. So if you are wanting something that is having the, your child write more and you just at, at level four, whatever grade they're in, you feel like they should be writing more, um, this might not, you might want to supplement or just not even go with this writing. It didn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. I feel like fourth grade is still pretty young. Um, I wanted her more to focus on the grammar aspect of it. I feel like the writing will come in time and, um, I'll do a more intensive writing program when she's a little bit older for, so it didn't bother me. Uh, but if that's something I know everybody's different and some people want to start writing really young. And so there wasn't a lot of writing in there. So whether you think that that is a pro or a con, um, it's obviously depending on what your goals are for your child. Uh, but just know going into it, there's not an extreme amount of her creative writing and book reports and um, essays or compare and contrast or um, what is it? Research papers, nothing like that to that extent at all. This is Larissa. So I did confirm uh, after I filmed that video, I should have probably done this before, uh, that she did only do that one paper because I'm like, I don't remember ever seeing any other ones. So whereas last year, Becca, she wrote more than more than one paper. But she said in The Good and the Beautiful's defense, she said they were preparing her all year to write a really good paragraph and a really good paper. Whereas Becca just said here, write a paragraph, which I will say is, I will agree with that. So this isn't an Becca versus The Good and the Beautiful. It's just like, that's not what this is meant to be. It's just like the two experiences comparing. Um, so there's that. So keep that in mind. So that's all we have. Um, I'm not sharing in this video history and science and all of that because we did those together as a group and I will have a video coming out in the near future very soon about um, the group subjects that we did and how that all worked. And so yeah, this was just her main independent work that she did. Oh, lastly, I'm sorry. She did um, Spanish with Duolingo and that's going fine. I don't feel like she'll probably be fluent in Spanish with it. I mean, maybe depending on how much she does, but um, for now it's working. And if she really does want to pursue an interest and in really delving into it, um, we might have to do a little bit more, beef it up a little bit more because I don't feel like that's going to cause her to become fluent or anything. So we'll but for now, it's working. So that is all we have. Um, if you enjoyed this video and thought it was helpful, please make sure you hit that like button. It just really helps my channel out and get this video out there. If you have not subscribed already, please make sure to subscribe so that you can see more homeschooling content just like this. If there's any questions, please feel free to leave them down below in the comments because I would love to answer anything or just let me know how you like. If you used any of these uh, curriculums this year, how it worked for you and for for your fourth grader. Thank you so much again. I appreciate you being here. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.